Welcome back. I hope you've watched my video from last week called Australian Water Markets. If you haven't, go back and do that now. Alright, this video is a bit of an insight into what I do with my time. I'll have the link below to the list of registered members' interests and I encourage you to go have a look because I don't have the time or the patience to look at them all, but I do go look at the major players. This brings us to Angus. Let's have a look at what Angus has been up to. Growth farming. Hmm. So let's have a look at their website, shall we? Profitable, experienced, safe. You know, there wasn't too much that was really interesting on this website. Just a board with people I've never seen before and links to some projects they're involved in and whatnot. But I did find a video I would like to show you. But before I do that, I'd like to quickly talk about how I decided to make this video. And the reason being, I wanted to make a connection to a video I made a long time ago called Cod, Cotton and Corruption, where I addressed the fish kill and the blue-green algae and the motor neuron disease. And I'm pretty sure that video is what got me blocked by David Littleproud on Twitter. There'll be a link to that as well, and you'll see what I mean by the connection I made here. And with that said, David Littleproud is a coward. Uh, it might be hard for everyone to tell, but... What I'm stitching here is inspired by the TV in my living room and we will take a quick moment to appreciate my attempt at stitching a little power button. Oh, I try. And now let's have a look at what Growth Farms Australia is up to, shall we? And I'll see you on the other end of it. This particular region that we're, we're doing this, uh, this video in now is known as the northwest region of, of New South Wales. Um, it's a very diverse region for, for cropping, predominantly cropping. Uh, historically it was livestock region, now cropping. Um, diverse as in um, multiple cropping enterprises here from rain growing cropping and, uh, and large amounts of irrigated, uh, irrigated cropping, predominantly cotton production. These soils are highly fertile, have high water holding capacity, you know, and perfect for growing irrigated crops. So they hold water and allow us to spread out irrigations, and they can capture a lot of rainfall. So that's why these soils are so attractive to us in this environment. So our main crop here, the focus is cotton, and the chickpeas and wheat are secondary, but still important to producing a profitable business. It's in part of the due diligence phase that we go through to historically model what that farm would have looked like. We use programs, specifically if it's a cropping farm, known as APSOM, uh, which is a CSIRO developed product. And what we can do with that model, use inputs that we understand, and that will give us an indication of what our production would have looked like over an historical period. So cotton gives us the highest return per megalitre of water in all the options of crops we can grow up here. We're very good at it, we grow high quality that's well suited to the market in the world because a lot of cotton in the world's poor quality so we get a premium for the product and that's why we use, that's why we grow cotton in this environment instead of growing other alternative crops. So we try and base the machinery on what's important to the farm and the return on the machinery so not so much about the, the, whether you own machinery or use contractors, it's about the value of the machinery and the cost of the asset so we're trying to understand the risk this farm uses all its own machinery to do ground operations, whereas uh, we have contractors coming to do the harvesting because that's the highest expensive operation, the dearest machinery. The data that I've seen on climate change uh, suggests that this region here uh, will not decrease in rainfall. Potentially what will happen is we will have more uh, volatile events of rainfall, so higher, higher volatility in our rainfall, but larger events, which can only really, uh, if your discipline is right in this land, because we store a lot of moisture in the soil, um, shouldn't be a hindrance to us. So yeah, that's what Angus Taylor is investing in. Now, I got some information from cottonaustralia.com. It tells us the water use and how many cotton farms there are in Australia and how much area they take up. So I thought we'll do some quick math. 
So if there's 1,500 cotton farms in Australia, with your average farm growing 576 hectares of cotton, and then the average hectare of cotton needing around 6 megalitres of water, so 1,500 times 576, that gets you 846,000 hectares of cotton each taking six megalitres each, and that's 5,184,000, and a megalitre is a million litres, so we times that by a million, and that's about how much water we use on cotton in Australia. So that's just over five trillion litres of water. Now you see, Kate McBride did the legwork, and she went and got footage, and she's seen the dead fish, she's seen the cotton. So if her proof and my data can't convince you that this is very bad, and that these problems are connected, then and you're just not going to be convinced. Oh yeah, do I need to remind everybody about how many towns in Australia were close to running out of water? There probably are still heaps that are. You can't really count on rainfall, you know, and you can't really have a whole town living like that. Multiple towns! Thanks for watching, like, subscribe.